Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how I produce and write and create ambient music. And I'm going to do that by taking you under the hood and showing you how I made the song Family. I'm excited to do that with this song because for me, Family had one of the lowest production times of any song I've ever made. It just kind of came out. And I actually think it's one of my more emotional and, and coincidentally, it's actually one of my more popular songs as well. Um, so this sort of dispels the myth that a song needs to take a long time to be done right or you need to spend a long time for it to be the right product and that's just not always the case. It, it depends song to song and so let's take a look at things here. The first thing I want to talk about is there's a drone that has a lot of layers that goes through the whole song. So uh, let's take a look at the first little bit here. Now what this is, is this is uh, in contact and running gran a granular synthesis plugin called Granulate, which basically takes an audio file and plays different chunks or grains uh, on repeat. And so the grain that I'm playing here, or the, I guess the sample that I'm playing here is, uh, it's an Unicorda sample. And so Unicorda is a, a plugin by Native Instruments and you can put, it's like piano and then you can put like felt and different stuff like that behind it. And so I turned up the felt and then I put a bunch of reverb on it with long decay times and uh, exported that and imported it into the granulate. And so that's what gives it like this windy feel is uh, like the felt that's on it with the reverb kind of creates that. And then next layer, this is same thing. It's granular synthesis. And this is actually of just like a, an audio file. I think actually of one of my songs that I just stretched and then I put like a really specific amount of EQ on it to just allow in some of the high mids and then I put some overdrive and some reverb on it to fatten it up and you know make it more pad like uh, then this part of the drum right here is just on the one this is just a strings patch that I filtered off some high end from uh, I, I think I, I don't know if I did it with EQ or a filter but I think I did it with a filter and fill uh, you know uh, low pass filter cut off some of the high and then put some reverb on it that's it and then this is arguably the most important part of the drone so this what this is is this is one of my songs horizon that i stretched using a really cool tool called paul stretch uh, i really recommend you looking into this and uh this is a free program basically what it does is it takes any audio file and it can stretch it as much as you want you can set how much you want it to stretch um, it like defaults to eight times uh, stretch, but, but you can go way more than that. And so basically you can take an audio file and make it, you know, into a drone. Uh, usually things that don't have percussion are best for this. And so I took one of my songs from my album Songs for Nora and I stretched it like crazy. And what's cool about this is it evolves over time, you know, because it's an actual track. It's not just going to drone straight through. There's different things happening. And so this is really what can give... Uh, a song like this character and make, keep it from feeling computerized is when things evolve and are layered and move that helps it feel human. Uh, and then also, you know, when it when the song builds more and there's like lower piano that can create like a cool swell like right here. Uh, next thing I want to cover is at the beginning you can hear like footsteps. Uh, footsteps in the snow, coincidentally. Look at, so good at naming things. Uh, and so just a little bit of background in order for you to understand why this is here. Um, I'm going to get deep for a second. Uh, back in 2016, uh, my wife and I lost our daughter. She was seven months pregnant. And so I wrote this uh, album for our daughter, Songs for Nora. And the image that I always came back to with this album was a footprint in the snow. You know, kind of left an imprint on us. And so this song, Family, was from the album I wrote for my son, who's now two, um, and it was about this idea of Nora and Benjamin, and this is our family, and so I wanted to start off with this image, and so I took my Zoom H1 recorder and went out in the snow during the winter, just kind of added that texture. Again, just gives a little bit of extra depth to what's happening. And then this piano line is just una corda sample from Native Instruments. With some Valhalla room reverb on it, uh, and this is what the settings look like. It's a lot of, a lot of decay, a lot of depth, um, just kind of make it float. And then there's this little 
synth that kind of floats up into the next part. This is just a synth from Omnisphere, Archaic Chasm, uh, preset that I put some, uh, put some reverb and put some, uh, put Supercharger GT from Native Instruments, which just kind of fattens it up and widens it. And now we get to the, the big chords here. So this is two layers. First layer is this one, which actually sits more in the background. This isn't typically the one that jumps out at you. But this is really, it's just a, a, a strings patch. Really simple. It doesn't even really sound that good on its own. Strings patch from Logic. But I uh, cut off with the auto filter. I cut off the uh, high frequencies. Put some reverb on it. Not even very much. And then I pitch shifted 30% uh, of the sound an octave up to do like a shimmer effect. And so after that, I put more reverb on with a lot more decay, a lot thicker. And then just cut some of the lows and low mids and then boosted the highs. And that's that. And then the sound that you're going to hear more is this one here, which is Reactor by Native Instruments, another plugin by them. But Reactor lets you build and create your own instruments. And so I downloaded this synth online. Someone else made this. And uh, basically, it's just like an ambient plugin. Uh, so this is actually just the first setting on it. I thought it was great. It's sort of like an ambient trumpet kind of sound. So that's where that is. And the footsteps come back in. Uh, layer in a different piano here. This is uh, from Spitfire Labs. Uh, I think this was free or I paid like two bucks for it. But it was super good. Just adds some more body to what's happening beneath the unicorda. And then uh, a lot of what I'm doing too is I'm editing the, or I'm automating the drones. Like you can see here, the volume automation to swell in and out and make room. I wanted them to come down when this piano line happened and then they'll swell back in here. You'll see this. To kind of create this, this fluctuation of motion. Now we have the chords again, which is layered with the piano. Same type of piano we had before. Let's skip that, because that's just kind of the same thing. And now you'll see, we're going to swell up volume-wise, but this is also where this rise and fall stretch pad, like I said, will swell up. All right, now there's a lot happening here. I wanted this part to, you know, the whole song sort of mellow and stays sort of in the same range, but then I wanted, when the, the climax of the song hits, I wanted to just explode and be this you know, uh, really full sound, hit the lows and soaring highs. And so let's talk about the lows first. Um, there's this kick, which I think is literally just an 808 kick. Uh, and I put some reverb on it and that's it. Just so it punches. That's it. And then also I brought in a sub, sub bass. Uh, and if you don't have the right speakers or headphones, you might not even be able to hear this, but this is literally just, you know, in like a synth. This would be like a sine wave, and uh, I don't even do anything to it. I just play it down low, sine wave, because that uh, naturally creates a really good sub bass. And so that's that. And then we got our swells. I don't even know where that swell is from. It might be from I've you know splice.com. That's a really good site for samples. Um, it might just be one that I picked up randomly, but just to swell into that hit. Now we got our vocals. So there's three different layers to this. The first layer is, uh, you know, one that just kind of supports the chords. A little bit of a rough start there. You wouldn't even know though. So I just recorded those vocals real quick and threw some, uh, you know, compression, uh, obviously some some auto-tune on there. Ya boy needs auto-tune. Uh, boosted the highs and then some reverb and that's it. And then the next part is same vocal processing, which is something that I, you know, that kind of drones through. And then the last one is I wanted to like soar. So you'll hear this here. Wanted to be up real high, just kind of moving around. The whole idea is like when this hit, I wanted to explode and, you know, there's a lot of things happening. And so having something that wasn't even predictable and was just kind of moving, I feel like was a big part of that. Mm -hmm. 
yeah. Uh, and then we got some strings that came in. I think I just used like the contact factory strings, but you could use whatever strings. Uh, I think put some reverb on there and then I automated the volume to swell up and down. That's kind of how it gets quiet and soft. We got this low pad. I think this is just an Omnisphere patch. Yeah. Yep, it's just the Abandrone patch. Uh, this sound actually wouldn't even be... I mean, it, it is a pretty specific pump, but getting a sound like this, I you could do pretty easily with just like this whole strings thing of cutting some filter off, you know, adding a little bit of shimmer, that type of thing. Uh, and then... This. Right, so these are just some vocals. These specifically are from Omnisphere. Uh, but again, you could just do this with a choir sample and you could swell it by automating volume. There's that. And I think that's everything there. Okay, so there are really, I think, a couple keys here. The first one is, um, I think it's good to get in the habit of layering. Uh, you know, even for the same type of sound, I layer a lot um, and kind of weave them in and out in terms of volume because that just creates a really dynamic, lifelike feel um, that'll give your track some life and some energy. I think the other important thing to realize is that you don't necessarily need a big budget to make this happen. Um, you know, I used Omnisphere in this track, but for a while I didn't have that. You don't need Omnisphere. Omnisphere is great, but there's a lot of other tools you can use that will get you the same type of stuff. You know, Paul Stretch is free. Um, Valhalla reverbs. There's the Shimmer reverb and the Room reverb. Each one's 50 bucks. And there's, you know, granular synthesis tools. You just have to start to look around and learn from other people and experiment and play around until you get what you want. But don't buy into the myth that it costs money to make good music because that's not always true. It can help. But there are plenty of ways to do it without having a budget. Hey, thank you so much for watching. I want to let you know I'm releasing a song this Saturday, August 24th. Um, and it's like a pop song with lyrics. I haven't done this in a long time and I'm really excited to do that again. I'm going to be releasing it under the name Evening Traveler. And so you can look out for that. Um, if you want, you can follow me on Instagram. I'll be, you know, updating a lot more about that. My Insta is at Josh Leak. I'd love if you follow me there and uh, stay in touch. Stay in touch.